podcasting from the Chicagoland area. This is Game On with Jackson Stewart, where we discuss men's lifestyle, focusing on sex, fitness, relationships, business, and more. We'll be interviewing the best of the best, the hot shots, and the rising stars in the worlds of modeling, fitness, cooking, and more. Influencers who are discussing keeping it sexy while at the top of their game. I'm your host, Jackson Stewart. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the game. Oh, okay. So let me go right now. <laughs> okay. This is Melody and you're listening to... Wait, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is Melody and you're listening to Game On with Jackson Stewart. Follow Game On with Jackson Stewart on YouTube at Game On with Jack, on the official blog www.gameonwithjack.blog and at the new store www.gameonwithjack.shop. Keep it sexy and game on. What if you could be a better player for the cost of one more cup of coffee a month? Get access to a growing library of lit erotica, behind-the-scenes action, and player's guides with tips on drinking, cooking, fitness, Dating, sex, and life after dark. Low tier rate while offer lasts. Patreon.com. Game on with Jack. Every player gets older, but you do not have to get old. I think it was Picasso that said, if you get old when you stop playing, you don't stop playing because you get older. Even as time moves with us, we can see it as either a friend or as a thief taking away our youth. Aging the right way is a key skill and one our guests this evening will share with us. <clears throat> Dr. Orris enjoyed a prestigious career as a periodontal regenerative surgeon, moving to a new passion in June of 2018. He finished that part of his life after a 33 year career to pursue new passions. At the young age of 70, Dr. Orris has taken on a new role as an interviewer and podcaster and government certified old guy. He streams from his new home in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Dr. Orris also mentors men to get what they want. He lives with his wife of 30 years, Oksana. Their status as empty nesters with two out of college employed children has left them and him with time and energy to share decades of successes, failures, and wisdom. Dr. Orris is not afraid to talk about uncomfortable topics on his podcast and very often brings the audience the unexpected. In addition to being, in his words, not mine, a government certified old guy, Dr. Orris is also our guest this evening. All right, guys, you've heard the introduction and the bio. Now join me in welcoming to Game On, the hard-charging, the powerful, and the sagely wise Dr. Orris. Dr. Orris, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you for having me on your program. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for agreeing. And if you guys um, if you guys have missed uh, any of the introduction of the bio, Dr. Orris is not only accomplished, but, I mean, he's on like his second or third career, and I think that's kind of the way – we as human beings need to go. Dr. Orris, can you let the audience know what platforms they can find you on and by what name? Uh, you can find me on all the major platforms. Uh, and uh, my podcast is called Old Guy Talks to Me. And I'm on the, uh, basically all the, the, the platforms. And also you can get a hold of me at my website, which is called the standard.academy. And that's my men's coaching program. And uh, I'll just make a plug here. Uh, if you want to get on a call with me, a short discovery call, you go to the standard.academy forward slash discovery call. And uh, you can schedule a, a little session with me. And uh, I'll try not to beat you up too much on that 15 minutes. And we'll make sure that we put that link out there for everybody. <laughs> and I, I, love yeah. your, uh, I love your cover photo for your uh, your podcast guest um, appearance. Mm -hmm. It's got you with the big cigar in your mouth. And one of the lines says, yeah. if I get it right, the cover doesn't match the content. I think that's what it says. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, people's, uh, when well, you see the cigar in the, in the glass of scotch, then it's pretty obvious. <laughs> but a lot of times, uh, people think that I'm kind of quiet, meek, and, uh, uh, unassuming. And, uh, that's the last thing I am. It's funny because so, I, uh, I looked at the image and I thought, oh, this guy's going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's going to say, get the hell out of here, Jackson. I ain't, I ain't dealing with you, but I'm glad that wasn't the case. Now, where are you from and where did you grow up? Uh, well, I was born in Chicago, but uh, at age eight, we moved to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And I essentially grew up in Phoenix uh, until, uh, you know, except for going away to school and various things like that. But I, we lived in Phoenix. I lived in Phoenix until about 2018 when uh, we uh, I sold my practice. And my wife and I moved to Las Vegas because of her business. And uh, my wife sells middle market companies, anything from five million to 150 million. And uh, she had she had a business going up here in Las Vegas. And there was we were empty nesters, and it was in like okay, it's time to move. Now you you were a doctor. You were a periodontal regenerative surgeon. Correct. You retire. And right. for a lot of people, uh, for, especially for a lot of men, that, that's where the game ends. Like they had a career, they retired, now they plan on, you know, playing golf for traveling. And then I know lots of guys, they were older than I was, but they retired and then they died. Yeah. And I like that yeah, you that, just didn't stop there. What, what kicked up at you that said, you know what? I'm going to go out there and, and help older guys create kick ass lives. And I love that line too, by the way, helping the older yeah. guys create kick ass lives. Well, actually, and Jackson, I'm going to tell you, it's not older guys now because I've kind of expanded my my uh, universe down to about 35. Okay. Uh, because because there's a huge need in terms of uh, what we're talking about. But to answer your question, what, uh, there's a couple of things. One is that uh, everybody in my family lives a long time, and uh, no one in my family, no male, has died of natural causes before the age of 90. Wow. And they were all they were all smoked. Uh, drank moonshine back in Ukraine and everything else. And so, uh, I knew that I was going to live for a long time and just, you know, hitting a small ball and trying to find it, uh, in the trees or in the water was not an idea. <laughs> it was not, it was not something that was particularly appealing to me. Um, and then the, the other thing is, is I'll, I, cause I talk about this a lot on my, on my show and, uh, I've had several gifts on, on this. Um, I've been on testosterone for over 25 years. Okay. Uh, testosterone optimization. And quite frankly, that is, leaves me feeling, um, mentally a lot younger than I am chronologically. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, it's a big factor in men's depression, uh, low testosterone. And it's getting to be a, a bigger and bigger issue, uh, not just for older guys, but actually for younger guys. And uh, it's affecting how men perceive themselves and how they react in the world and how grumpy they are and all sorts of things. Um, we uh, uh, had a friend, um, and the, I got a whole thing, uh, and we can talk about this if you want. I got a whole thing. I, I talk about testosterone. But testosterone levels in men have been going down generationally. And this, is, this has been pointed out in many, many, um, many, many studies. And... Actually, it's affecting what's called, you know, when you go to your doctor and you go, oh, you're in a normal range. Well, the normal range keeps on dropping on testosterone because they're not normal does not mean healthy when they're when we're talking about lab values. Normal is the average of unhealthy people as a general rule. And I'm, I will make my disclaimer here. I'm not a physician. Uh, you know, you know, before you do anything, go seek appropriate advice from a, uh, from a trained, uh, 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 practitioner. But this is, this is a problem that's occurring. And, um, I've had a number of friends who've gone on testosterone. Um, and, you know, there's, it's like, it's like they've reawakened their lives. No, and I'm sure you've done research on it. What what have you found has been attributing to the the decline in testosterone with each generation? Is it activity that men are doing, you know, less and less or more and more of? You know, I think that's that's some of it. And a big part of it, though, is that, you know, we're we're being subjected to all sorts of what's called what's the, the term is, is called endocrine disrupting compounds. And what it's affecting is actually the, the, the development of men's testicles. Um, and there's a, a, a there's a book called Countdowns written by is it actually is a paper in the American Physiological Journal. 
uh, and that's a that's a highly refereed journal. I mean, you don't get in there with putting trash out. Uh, people look at your shoe very closely before you get to publish in that journal. And they talk about uh, not only uh, uh, testosterone levels going down, but sperm counts going down. And there's a uh, there, the paper was uh, several authors, including a uh, uh, several uh, uh, PhDs of uh, uh, Hebrew University in Israel, and also uh, an epidemiologist from uh, NYU. And they have looked at what's going on in terms of, and I'm going to go sperm counts and I'll come back to testosterone. Uh, they have looked at sperm counts and men's sperm counts in the last 30 years have dropped by 50%. And yeah, and the slope of that drop is continuing. And their estimation is by, uh, by 2050 or so, most men in the world will be infertile. So don't worry about global warning and all that other fucking shit. Uh, that's not going to be matter. And you see that in, in, uh, in, uh, when it declines in populations around the world. Uh, you know, the population is not being replaced. And barely it's being replaced in the United States, but just barely. And that's more of a, uh, it has to do more with, uh, uh, the fact that, that, uh, uh, Hispanics in general tend to have more than two kids. It's, it's a cultural thing, and, and, and they, they're a significant part of the population. But you look at, at lots of countries in Europe, in Japan, other places, the population is not being replaced. Now, you were, uh, you know, worked with teeth, if I'm correct, periodontal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dental, dental implants and, and gum surgery. You retire, and now you're taking on these important but, like, lofty topics and ideas who are some of your influences? Like, who did you, whose voice did you hear that said, hey, Oris, just don't retire and sit back on your laurels, you know, get out there and, and, and take the good word to man, show them how to do better, show them how to do good. Who are your influences? Well, I, I think, you know, as far as me doing that, uh, that was actually self-driven. Okay. Uh, uh, that was not like anyone out there telling me like, oh, you need to do this or whatever. Uh, I am by nature an attention whore. <laughs> so, so I love having a podcast. I love being on podcasts. I love being the center of attention. I love having people sitting there and listen to me. So, uh, so I, that is, that is something, uh, that I love. And, uh, also I've always had this gift and I didn't really understand it. For a long time, but I've had, I've always had this gift about being able to uh, assess things very quickly in terms of being solution oriented, and so I can I kind of see over the horizon in terms of things. Sure. And when I, when I tell when I when I tell people to do things, um, you know I, I understand I can explain exactly why you should do it. Um, you know I had um, a young man that I was talking to. Uh, you know, and I'm a big believer in this. Uh, he said, "Oh yeah, they're, they're considering me for for this position at this uh, uh, really really famous up high scale restaurant." He's in culinary school, and I uh, and I, I was listening. And he said, "I'm going to send an email to the recruiter." And I said, "Like, dude, don't send an email to the recruiter. You are just going to be one of hundreds of other emails that she is going to get. Get her, send her a nice." handwritten letter mm. through the mail that will stand that will fucking stand out that, they, they, you, will, you will be put to the top of the line I even offered my, my, my oldest daughter does beautiful calligraphy I said I'll have my oldest daughter uh, address the envelope in a, in a beautiful calligraphy uh, that will just make that thing stand out uh, of course, you didn't follow my advice, but with the help <laughs> you can only do so much <laughs> so, so you were self-driven is there anybody, so influences didn't drive you, but is there anybody that you, I won't say look up to, but anybody who you model, anybody who you draw inspiration from along those lines? Yeah, there's, there's several people that, that, that I would consider coaches, mentors, uh, influencers in my life. Uh, I would say the first one is we did, uh, my wife and I, uh, did a whole bunch of Tony Robbins programs. Okay. That was about 25 years ago. Uh, and that, many of the lessons that we learned there uh, uh, stayed. Uh, there's people that I, that I, in the, um, in the testosterone, uh, stem cell peptide space, uh, I follow something called a World Peptide Conference, uh, uh, 
uh, World Pet Fight Congress, and uh, there's a doctor by the name of Bill Seeds. I spent a lot of time interviewing tip of the spear doctors. Uh, 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 one was Betsy Yurth, who used to be who's an orthopedic surgeon, but does very little surgery these days. Works mostly with regenerative medicine. Um, as far as from the uh, other side of things, uh, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson. <clears throat> uh, there's a guy I follow on testosterone uh, called Jay Campbell. Uh, he's a little bit, he, he's a little bit, he's kind of gone off the goofy end, but he, he knows his testosterone. Uh, he, he's, he's a little bit uh, woo woo. Uh, it talks a lot about vibration, but I just, I just pass over that shit. Um, and then, um, Jordan Peterson is a big influence in my life. And then I also, uh, was, am is still in a group with a guy by the name of Garrett J. White, who is, uh, um, really, uh, kind of a no, no nonsense men's coach. Um, and, um, so, so there, there's a number of people that I use in my life. I try to find, uh, especially for my podcast, because my podcast is born out of self interest. I try to find the person who is the biggest expert in an area and interview them. And, and that, and the, the, my podcast is the opportunity for me to talk to someone for 45 minutes that normally would have no reason to talk to me. Uh, I mean, I've had four, you know, I don't know if you watch UFC. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had Forrest Griffin on my podcast. Nice. Yeah. So I, I get a lot of people, uh, I get a lot of really, I've had people who've been on, uh, Tim Ferriss and Joe Rogan, uh, and so I, like I said, I got a pretty high end group of guests that come to my program. Yeah, you know, one of my favorite books is uh, by Tim Ferriss, The Tool, Tools of the Titans, or Tools of Titans, right, I think. Right. I love that book, love his podcast. Um, I think he also did, uh, I think, is it the, the four, is it the four hour work week, I think, or the four day work four week? Four hour work week. Four hour work week. I mean, phenomenal author. Uh, he uses himself as the experiment. If you guys have not ever read anything or heard anything by Tim Ferriss, um, do yourself a favor and check them out. I think a lot of men hear getting older and they hear getting old. And those are two totally different things. Getting older and getting older, two different Absolutely. things. Absolutely. What are, what are three pieces of advice that you can give men who are afraid of getting old because they're getting older? I think the first one is, uh, I strongly recommend, uh, testosterone optimization. I, um, and just to give you an example, um, about four years ago, uh, I went to New Zealand with my youngest daughter and, uh, we were there and because I did not want to cross any international borders and everything I use is, 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 uh, with prescription. I get all my stuff from doctors. I don't buy anything out of the, the trunk at the gym or anything like that. Uh, but I just said like, you know what? One bad day with a border agent in New Zealand. I don't want to be looking for a lawyer in New Zealand. I don't want to be blah. So I just left my testosterone at home and I was, t- we were eight days into the trip and my wife goes like, is there anything okay? Cause you sound kind of weird. Uh, I said, Oh no, it's fine, 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 fine. And then, um, uh, two days later, we're on the phone again, and she goes like, did you take your testosterone? And I go, no. She goes, wow. She says, yeah, I haven't heard you sound like this in ages. And I was having a time in my life. But, you know, it was just, uh, it was so noticeable. And I've had friends that have gone on and off. And when they get off, they're miserable. Mm. So the, 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 the biggest thing, and, 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 the, 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 and I've got several podcasts about this. Uh, the challenge with testosterone therapy is that your primary care physician most of them don't have a clue. And, uh, so they, they're, they're going to treat to the lab values of, even those lab values have just gone down recently. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the lab value, the high normal was, uh, 1100. It dropped down. Now the high normal is like 960. And then the lower range number is also dropped down in terms of what's considered normal. And, uh, I, I, I have not been able to, to, uh, to find this, but I had one physician tell me that you realize, Oris, that the high normal 20 years ago was 1500. And that, it's like, it's a third. Yeah. Is, that's a definite decline in just a short period of yeah, time. Yeah. And, and so I, I would say that, uh, and there's lots of, there's, uh, again, I go into this. I've got, uh, several, uh, interviews I've done with this. We go into details about, 
all there's there's lots of myths about you know that it's bad for your heart, it's bad for your blood pressure, and, you know your dick's going to fall off, you're going to get prostate cancer, blah blah blah. It doesn't. It that is all not true. There's actually two studies, uh, two consensus papers from the Mayo Clinic of all places that says there's no problem with taking testosterone. So, uh, so, so, you know, if the Mayo Clinic signs off on it, I think we can be pretty sure that that, that and the two studies that people always report have been um, uh, debunked, and they were horrible studies, but unfortunately, they're out there, and a lot of people are just repeating bad information. Um, the second thing, because um, that was a lengthy answer uh, <laughs> well, on my part. I, I was just going to say, there's no warning that stops men from doing anything faster than your dick's going to fall off. <laughs> I think that is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ever want to, ever want to protect anything, just put a sign up yeah. that says "Touching this makes your dick fall off." Yeah, exactly. And uh, so the, the the second thing uh, is uh, your relationship with your significant other. Very good point. Uh, so uh, uh, no, I, I think you know having a, a, a where you continue to grow as a couple. Uh, most people kind of go. Uh, and I, and I talk about this in, in my coaching program. Uh, you know, what happens is, you know, you get in a relationship and everything's really hot and heavy. You know, you got no money, but you're happy. You're stupid. You know, she's happy. She's stupid. Uh, and then, you know, start making a little bit of money. Uh, and then next thing you know, you got kids. I don't know if you have kids. Uh, but all of a sudden the kids, the kids start Taking a lot of time, a lot of energy, uh, there's stress at work, uh, maybe she's working. And next thing you know, you guys are, don't even know who each other are. And this, this happens slowly, it doesn't happen like overnight. And, uh, and so, you know, you're grumpy and you want sex, but she's not in the mood. And, uh, you know, and then you're, you're thinking, when she says, I'm not in the mood, you're thinking like, you bitch. Uh, you know, you may even say it out loud, which definitely will mean you're not going to get anything. Um, and then, you know, just kind of people just grow apart over time. And so one of the things that's really important is for a guy to make the person, his, his I'm going to say his woman, and I know some people will say, oh, you mean his woman? And, you know, that's misogynist. Oh, fuck you. Um, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm her man. Uh, so, so it's not, uh, it, it's to make it fun. And, you know, when was the last time, uh, you know, when we, the man I coached, one of the things I asked was like, when was the last time you made your wife feel like a woman? Mm. You know, what have you done? And, you know, there's all sorts of answers, which I'm not going to reveal because that's part of my coaching program. But but, the, but that's the question is, like, when was the last time, when was the last time you made her feel like a woman? Yeah. And a woman wants to be made to feel like a woman. That reminds me of the, uh, oh, God, um, Napoleon Hill. You know, so the, the think and grow rich. But one of the chapters, right, you know, right, there's right. like 24 chapters, 24 points. But one of them is one of the keys to being successful is who you got as a partner. Oh, absolutely. It's the biggest decision. It's the most important decision you make in your life. And I forget, and there's a, you know, people out there, the, the, the theologians who can quote the Bible back and forth, but there is a quote and I'm going to butcher it, but it's like, it's better to live on the roof of your house than to be married to the wrong woman. And I'm like, Oh, damn. <laughs> like, the, the, the roof, roof? They're like, yeah, the roof, man, live on the roof is better. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, you know, this is the thing about the, the wrong woman. Uh, because things happen in relationships where I'm going to say you're at fault and she's at fault, but you can't control what she does. You can only control what you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can, you can work to change that relationship and, uh, you know, turn, you know, turn it around. So, so there are there are things that you start taking for granted. Uh, you get pissed off. Kids show up. There's a lot of stress. Next thing you know, you're you know your spent your life is spent driving kids to to uh, volleyball or basketball or whatever or you know band practice or whatever you know things you are. And uh, people grow apart. And uh, next thing you know, the kids are off to school to go to college quite often or leave the house. And there you are, strangers. 
And uh, that's when a lot of divorces happen. Two things happen. Strange, uh, 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 men and women become strangers over time. Uh, and then uh, you, a lot of times at the same time that uh, women, hit, uh, women hit menopause. And I talk, I, there's a number of, I've done a number of interviews with gynecologists that talk about menopause. Um, so those, that's the number two is a relationship. Uh, number three is, uh, uh, physical activity. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, being, uh, state, maintaining your, your health and your vibrancy is, is physical activity. Uh, and by that I mean, uh, there's a, a, a friend of mine, uh, and I, I used to see him in the gym. I've got, I've, I've known him since the seventies. Um, very successful guy, but he was in the gym and I, I looked at him and I just said, I said, I looked at him one day and I go, Bill, you managed to get 10 minutes of workout into an hour <laughs> because he would just, <laughs> he would just sit and, you know, he'd talk and he would talk. He'd walk around and talk to everyone. He fucking did. And this guy was a stud. He was a college athlete. Uh, so he was, he was, you know, he was, he was really good. And, uh, I think we all know so, that guy, right? Anyway. Yeah. If you don't know that guy, it's, 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 you're the guy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And sometimes, uh, sometimes it's a trainer who's like that, uh, who's just sit there and they just like yak and like, fuck, you can't yak and train, uh, at the same time. But the other thing is, is, and I think this is mandatory, lifting weights. Yes. Lift, lifting weights is absolutely mandatory. If you're just doing cardio, you're, you're, you're fucking stupid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's so many, uh, so many, we've had fitness experts on the show and they're like, Lifting weights is like, that's like the key to eternal youth, you know, in a sense, because it, it keeps your body so well tuned for getting right. older and for combating things like, you know, bone density loss and muscle loss. Oh, absolutely. And I still, I, I still lift heavy. I have to be very careful because, you know, you, you there's a tendency to get more, you, you're more easily earned or injured as you get older. Uh, so I, t- I tend to be very, very careful. At the same time, uh, you know, I, I think lifting weights is, is one of the most important things that people like, you know, just do cardio. And, uh, again, you see that in the gym where it's like, and, and then next thing you know, it's like, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're losing muscle mass and and everything, and your shoulders start drooping, and you start uh, you know shuffling around, so living, lifting your feet, and all that other stuff. You know, I think it's a, and it's a quote I've said on the show a bunch of times about working out, but the uh, the actor Jamie Fox, and mm-hmm. he has a great quote about. He said when he was in his twenties, he used to exercise for like his beach muscles, you know, the abs and the the chest and the arms. Right. He said, now that he, at the time he was in his forties and I know he's in his fifties now. He goes, now he lifts weights to injury proof his body. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, guys are not in their thirties or forties yet. You don't understand the importance of injury proofing, but you will. It's that, yeah. Yeah, it's that core strengthening, you know, and just, yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree with those, any, those three anymore. That's some great, yeah. great yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and as I, as I've gotten older, cause I'm, I'm 70, uh, and, uh, one of the things I started to introduce is actually, uh, uh, exercises for stability. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I've noticed that I'm not as stable as I used to be. Uh, part of it was I had a, a viral ear infection that affected my, uh, balance, uh, that I never completely recovered from. But, uh, I do a lot of BOSA ball. I do uh, squats on BOSA ball and that kind of shit. Uh, and so, so, uh, working on your stability and agility are also very important as you get older. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the kettlebell. You know, so many things you can do with the yeah. kettlebell for strengthening and, and conditioning. And a friend of mine recently turned me on to Pilates and I'm like, all right, Pilates is going to be like more aggressive yoga, but shit. I mean, the, what it does for your lengthening, your strengthening and your stability uh-huh. in, in like 15 minutes is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. What, um, in in terms of surprises, right? As you get older, what's been your number one surprise? That's been a negative. Your number one surprise has been a positive about getting older. Um, the uh, the the slower healing uh, with injury. 
uh, it's not a surprise, but but that's been kind of like the thing that frust- frustrates me the most. And uh, it happens when I don't listen to my body. There was a time that I, I, should, I shouldn't have done those extra set of reps and put me back three months in terms of my being able to get back into, into doing what I wanted to do. So I think that's, that's probably one of the things is, is as you get older, you have to start listening to your body um, and not like, oh, no, I'm going to push through the pain. Well, you know, first of all, it's never smart at any, any age, but <laughs> as you get older, that's really, it's really stupid because what are you pushing through uh, other than being being able not to go work out for, for several weeks? Um, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, also that you can, uh, at this point, uh, as you get older, Shit's going to happen that you you can't anticipate, mm-hmm. uh, and that was uh, uh, this this time last year. Uh, I had had really bad diverticulitis. Uh, yeah, which uh, that's brutal stuff. Which, yeah, and I had a really really bad, and I also had really bad back pain at the same time. Uh, like back pain, like took take me to the ER where I was like just praying for the morphine drip. <laughs> um, but I ended up <laughs> having to have, and this came out of the blue. Uh, I had to have an ostomy, and I don't know if you know what an ostomy is. No, I don't know what an ostomy uh, is. What is that? Uh, ostomy is where they disconnect your intestine from your colon and you shit uh, into a bag through a hole in your stomach. Ah, okay. Okay. And uh, this was like, it was very depressing. Yeah. It was, it was probably emotionally, uh, physically, it was uh, intellectually, it was one of the most challenging times in my life at age 70. Uh, and so, uh, actually no, I was 69 then. Uh, so, so distinction without difference. Um, but it, you know, this was just came out of the blue. And, uh, you know, I, fortunately I got, uh, this happened in January, uh, in May, I got reconnected. Everything's fine. I couldn't, don't even have any idea that I actually went through this, but, but it was a, it, you know, it was, it was a challenge. So, so that's one of the things is, is that shit happens out of nowhere. And, uh, that was particularly bad because I, we couldn't get the bag to stick on, on for, for about four weeks. And we kept on going to these wound healing centers and they actually tried this and tried this. And finally we found someone that actually was able to help us. And, uh, so, uh, but that was really interesting. Uh, part of also, I won't go back to it is, uh, when I had the reconnection surgery, uh, usually it's like a two or three day recovery period, but I was out of the hospital like the next morning. And I think a lot of that has to do with with my uh, testosterone and how it helps it, it changes my whole physiology. So those are the bad surprises or negative surprises of getting older. What's been a good surprise? Something that like let's say something that thirty five year old Oris would not have expected, and seventy year old Oris is telling him about. Uh, you're gonna have. A wonderful wife and a wonderful kids. Mm. Uh, and part of that is when you, cause when you say 35, I did not get married till I was 40. Okay. Uh, I was very old. I dated a lot. I'd been engaged several times. Uh, but I was actually, I, I was very immature. I was very immature in my, uh, in my thirties. I mean, I was highly immature in my thirties. <laughs> It probably, you know, uh, you know, and and it's kind of funny because I was, uh, I've had, to, I've had got, just got back from a trip with my younger daughter. Uh, she's kind of doing something fun. She's going around the United States. She works totally virtually, and uh, she's going around the, the United States. And uh, you can follow her at, at Katya Explorers. Uh, but she she's going from city to city, spending about a month in the city. But unfortunately, she had to put her dog down, and she was in Denver. So I flew up with her, and we uh, we drove up to uh, uh, Seattle, which was her next stop. And we spent a couple of days in uh, Jackson, which was a really uh, Wyoming. It was a fantastic place to go. Um, but that was the case. And the, the, the thing that I'm talking about, I'm talking about in my 30s, because uh, I was telling my daughter on, on this trip, we were talking. And uh, I said, you know, had your mom and I met five years earlier, we would never have gotten married. 
because you were neither you just weren't ready for it or because you're a maturity level or a little bit of both I have maturity level everything we were just and my wife said the same thing if i if she had met if she had met me when she was uh in her twenties, she would never have gotten married to me uh we just we just would we would not and we're we've been married now for over thirty years. And, uh, our life is very good. Our life is very good on, on a whole bunch of different levels. It's all about timing. So, and, 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 uh, and we work every day. We work to make it better. We're really, you know, uh, there are times that, uh, I'm the primary concern. There's times that she's a primary concern. There's times that, that we're focused on ourselves as our, as, as a couple. And there's times that we focus on our family, but, uh, we kind of, I think we have a, a very good balance. We've, we've achieved a very good balance in this realm. In keeping with the themes of sexiness, and I love this question. Every guest hates it, but what is the sexiest thing about you? Um, my sense of humor. And what makes a person sexy in your opinion? Um, them being fun and responding to my sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about me. Once again, Dr. Orange proves he is an attention whore, and, and I think that's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that, you know, uh, I, I've always, one of the things is I've always dated smart women. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, uh, you know, uh, except for one who is, I refer to her as the daughter of darkness, but that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a whole other story. Wait, she, she was my, she was, she, she was my favorite attraction woman to date. Wait, you dated her too? <laughs> I think we did. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's got one, you know, you know, she, she had the, she said, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying your baby at the end when I broke up. And I said, like, uh, by the way, you forgot you told me that you had a tubal ligation. That's why we never worried about birth control. <laughs> Everybody's got that daughter in darkness. Damn it, that woman dates everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Glenn, yeah, from the movie Fatal Track. Yeah. That was right about the time the movie, that was right about the time that movie was out. That. So it was like, it was, it was like, uh, and the best advice I got from a friend of mine who's unfortunately passed away, but he's, uh, it turned out he, uh, I, he became my mentor and then we became friends was he says, Orist, he said, whatever you do, if she has her baby, have your lawyer contact her lawyer and set up, uh, child support, do not marry her. <laughs> Yeah, and that goes back to that second rule, right? Like who you yeah. pick. And um Yeah. Yeah, that you said that daughter of darkness. I had so many flashbacks to my own different daughters of darkness. Uh time for the quick game, folks. Or we'd like to give our guests a chance to run through some entertaining questions. Doctor Orris, are you ready? Oh my gosh, okay. All right. Shoot, go ahead. Spaghetti sauce on or in the pasta? In the pasta. If you had to share a bed with any animal, just like sleep next to it, nothing else, which one would you pick? A dog. What kind of dog? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I don't know. We we had a we had a nice labradoodle. Okay. Uh, What's your favorite word in the English English language? Me. And your favorite two letters are M-E, probably. <laughs> M-E. You know, I read somewhere, they said the sexiest word in the English language, there's two. One is please, which, you know, of course. And a second is window, which is kind of weird, but I got please come into my window. I don't know. Um, best drink you've ever had or your favorite drink. Oh, uh, I, I, I like, I'm a seasonal drinker, uh, scotch in the winter and vodka in the summer. I love some vodka. I'm a whiskey guy, but I, love, I do – vodka has a place for me, too. Best piece of advice your mom or dad ever gave you? Oh, man, that's maybe a stumper. <laughs> uh, but yeah, see, but my dad and I did not have a good relationship. Uh, he was actually a, a very poor uh, male role model. Mm. Um I don't know if my mom ever really, well, she, she tried to give me advice, but I wouldn't listen. A lot of times I tell the truth, it wasn't, um, you know, I just wasn't ready for it. But I, I, will, I will tell you a story that uh, when, uh, when I was, we still lived in Chicago then, and we went, I went to St. Nicholas Ukrainian Catholic Church, <laughs> and for, for first Holy Communion in the second grade, uh, everyone went to this local tailor and they had a blue suit. 
And even though we couldn't afford it, which, we, which, which unfortunately was a habit in my family, um, my mom went to Marshall Fields and bought me a black suit. So I was the only one out of all the boys in my class that had a black suit and that stood out. And that was so cool. And I think that fit into my, maybe my, maybe being an attention whore is a genetic thing. <laughs> but, but that, was, that, that made me feel really special that I was different from everyone else, which I've been told a lot. They said like, people would go like, you're not, you're not like, <laughs> you're not like, you're not like, like everybody else wearing a blue suit. Yeah, yeah, I'm not like it. Yeah, well, it was funny. It was funny because I, uh, my best, uh, my best friend from then, I, I we come back every once in a while to Chicago, and I was in the eighth grade, and uh, we were going to go to the movies uh, in Chicago. But instead of going to the local movie theater, I said, let's hop on the bus and <laughs> go up to the uh, Miracle Mile uh, downtown Chicago. And then there I was in eighth grade trying to get into a uh, strip club. Um, and uh, so <laughs> my friend looks at me and goes like, you're not like my other friend. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ernest gets in all kind of trouble out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did not get in, oh, yeah. uh, but, uh, <laughs> but much to my disappointment. <laughs> but gosh, we, I, I wouldn't even know what to do with a table dance. <laughs> uh, but, I'll give this picture is like, like a, an eighth grader just up on some crates in an alley trying to peek in through the window of a strip club, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, but we, we ended up seeing, uh, which was, which was very risque at that point was, uh, uh, Thunderball, uh, Sean Connery. But oh yeah. With, with uh, seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, double seven. That that was pretty risque too. So uh that kind of got the risque part done. What's your favorite time of the year? Um, I don't like the summer. Uh I like the cold outside actually. The coolness. Now, now obviously when I talk about cool living in in Las Vegas, uh we're not talking about snowfall. Though it does rain snow every once in a while in Las Vegas, but it never sticks really. But, uh, my favorite is, is really, uh, uh, I like, I like the winter. I like, I actually like the when it gets dark early. Yeah, it's, it says Chicago on you. You know what I mean? I think uh, most Chicago <laughs> people tend to like the winter. I, I don't know why, cause winters in Chicago are a nightmare, but it's in there. Yeah. Uh, well, but, you know, I, I only lived in Chicago for eight years, but, uh, you know, my, but like I said, I like, I like it when it gets dark early. It, it uh, don't, don't take much, why. man. But you're a Chicago guy. Whether you lived there for eight years or eight minutes, you're a Chicago guy. <laughs> Uh, hot dogs or hamburgers? Yeah. Oh, hot dogs without doubt. Uh, Chicago style. See, there you go. Yeah, yeah. With the with the with the uh, 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 neon relish, neon green <laughs> relish. Go on the dark uh, relish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm curious to hear the answer on this one. In a water balloon fight, and you get to the to the garden hose, do you ask for surrender or do you drown your opponent? Oh, the absolute drown. <laughs> No mercy. Well, yeah. And last but not least, uh, who inspires you? Um, my wife. Good answer. My kid. Cool answer. My kids. Awesome answer. Uh, yeah. Uh, because they are some of the hardest working people I know. And, uh, they've, uh, each of over all of them have worked hard to be successful and overcome obstacles. Uh, success was not linear in their lives. Um, outside of that, uh, I'm trying to think uh, who I kind of, I, I guess it's going to go back to my mentors I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, to uh, Tony Robbins, Gary J. White, Jordan Peterson. Uh, I like Joe Rogan. I even started liking Bill Mayer, which really makes me concerned because I'm, I'm, I'm you know, my ill coming no surprise is, is that I'm a, I'm a, a right wing wing nut. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, I, Bill Mayer is, is kind of like the last, him and Alan Dershowitz are the last two living de- liberals in the world. Uh, everybody's gone off the deep end on the reservation on that stuff. So, uh, and it causes me great, it causes me great concern for where, our country said well good people sexy people that wraps up our interview with the hard charging the hilarious and the sagely wise dr oris dr oris 
let people know one more time where they can find you and by what username. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna, if I'm going to ask you to put my social media links in, sure, in the show sure, notes sure. Or, along with my website, probably the best place to find me uh, is to go to the standard uh, dot academy. And that's my website. That's my coaching site. Uh, sign up for a uh, free discovery call and uh, we can do that. We can figure out uh, what the hell is going on in your life. And then and maybe whether, whether you're, there's, a, there's two outcomes. There's two outcomes. I'm, I'm going to tell you you're beyond hope and uh, I can't work with you or two. We, we, do, <laughs> we work. <laughs> and, 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 and those people are, those people that are just, you know, um, I, I shouldn't say that. I should say that everyone has hope, but it depends on whether you're willing to do the work. And a lot of times people uh, don't want to uh, don't want to do the work to get to where, where they want to. And the other thing is my website, my uh, blog, uh, my podcast is called Old Guy Talks to Me. And uh, you can find that on, uh, on Spotify, Apple, uh, all the major platforms. Dr. Orris, thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, Jackson. Thanks for having me on. It's been a blast.